Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Breaking: John Kerry just caught going behind Trump's back to make secret deal with Iran. Former President Obama's Secretary of State John Kerry and a group of his former State Department officials have been unofficially busy being unofficial diplomats in recent weeks. While the duly elected current President Donald Trump prepares to pull the plug on the infamous Iran deal, Kerry has been lurking and clandestinely sneaking around the world trying to salvage his pet project just ahead of its May 12 renewal deadline. The Boston Globe reports Dash. John Kerry's bid to save one of his most significant accomplishments as Secretary of State took him to New York on a Sunday afternoon two weeks ago, where, more than a year after he left office, he engaged in some unusual shadow diplomacy with a top ranking Iranian official. He sat down at the United Nations with Foreign Minister Javad Zarif to discuss ways of preserving the pact limiting Iran's nuclear weapons program. It was the second time in about two months that the two had met to strategize over salvaging a deal they spent years negotiating during the Obama administration, according to a person briefed on the meetings. While on his clandestine unofficially official diplomatic venture Kerry has met with world leaders from Europe including German President Frank Walter Steinmeier. EU official Federico Mogherini and French President Emmanuel Macron in both Paris and New York, where they discussed sanctions and regional nuclear threats in both French and English. This type of rogue diplomacy is very rare for a former Secretary of State and many may even consider it to be considered espionage or even treason. Kerry is reportedly actively working with world leaders and foreign governments to undermine American foreign policy and try to salvage the Iran deal. Apparently losing his heart. As The Globe notes, the effort to salvage the Iran deal highlight the stakes for Kerry personally, as well as for other Obama-era diplomats who are dismayed by what they see as Trump's disruptive approach to diplomacy, and who view the Iran nuclear deal as a factor for stability in the Middle East and for global nuclear nonproliferation. Foreign policy expert Michael O'Hanlon of the Brookings Institution states, It is unusual for a former Secretary of State to engage in foreign policy like this, as an actual diplomat and quasi-negotiator. Of course, Former secretaries of state often remain quite engaged with foreign leaders, as they should, but it's rarely so issue-specific, especially when they have just left office. In fact, Kerry is conducting his meetings below the radar because he recognizes that they would provoke Trump. Another concerning aspect of the story are the parallels to the actions of former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, who was accused of violating the Logan Act by talking to foreign officials prior to President Trump taking office. Kerry is clearly significantly more out of bounds, in that he is functioning in the capacity of a private citizen, and not that of a member of the transition team for an incoming president. Yet if you believe that the Logan Act was legitimately used as a means to question Michael Flynn, then how are you not demanding the same DOJ-F.B.I. investigation against John Kerry? There should be equal application of the law. Fox News reports Dash. Kerry's reported actions immediately sparked criticism and raised claims that such dealings with Iranian and European officials could violate the Logan Act, which prohibits private citizens from negotiating on behalf of the U.S. government without authorization. While no one has ever been successfully prosecuted under the law, the Logan Act was raised last year over former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn's negotiations at the United Nations over a resolution with Israel during the Trump transition. John Kerry helped craft a flaccid deal that granted the terror regime in Tehran vast monetary and geopolitical concessions, even as it put them on the glide path to nuclear weapons by its own terms, Saurabh Amari, senior writer at Commentary magazine, told Fox News. The biggest public service he can render now is to go away. Florida Senator Marco Rubio said Kerry's move certainly raises Logan Act questions. Zero Hedge reports Dash. Meanwhile, Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has accused Iran of developing a secret project to test and build nuclear weapons before the 2015 Iran deal was reached. In a global televised address, Netanyahu unveiled a cache of 55,000 pages of documents and 183 CDs, comprising Iran's alleged atomic archive of documents on its nuclear program. The files allegedly proved Tehran ran a secret program, called Project Ahmad, to test and build nuclear weapons. While Iranian leaders have long said their nuclear program is only for peaceful purposes, Netanyahu claimed this was not the case according to tens of thousands of pages of documents, which he said were copied from a highly secret location in Iran. Those files allegedly detail Project Ahmad, which Netanyahu described as a comprehensive program to design, build and test nuclear weapons. These files conclusively prove that Iran is brazenly lying when it says it never had a nuclear weapons program, Netanyahu said.
The files prove that. Kerry responded to Netanyahu's evidence, stating that the documents were nothing new, and simply proved that all that's needed are inspections to ensure that Iran is complying with the current agreement. Every detail Prime Minister Netanyahu presented yesterday was every reason the world came together to apply years of sanctions and negotiate the Iran nuclear agreement, because the threat was real and had to be stopped, Kerry tweeted Tuesday. It's working. Kerry is coordinating his push with a group of officials who were his top advisors at the State Department, and who helped craft and negotiate the Iran deal in the first place. The group, called Diplomacy Works, has an advisory council that includes lead Iran deal negotiator Wendy Sherman, former State Department Chief of Staff John Finer, and former spokeswoman Jen Psaki. The group claims to be responsible for 100 news articles, 34 television and radio hits, and 37 opinion pieces on the Iran question. They do fact-checks of criticisms of the agreement and blast them out to an email list of nearly 4,000 policymakers and foreign policy experts. Boston Globe In other words, a former U.S. Secretary of State is working with his former colleagues to conduct United States diplomacy with foreign leaders with no official permission. We can only guess what the pitch is he'll be out in 2020, just hang on. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like, and subscribe. Thank you.